first guitar I built was on my back porch and I didn't have any power tools. Everything was done by hand and I just really fell in love with the tactile sensations and the smells of all the woods and, and just the, the process of doing it. I love using the local desert ironwood in my guitars. And some of it looks like a mountain range and so I love the fact that you know Tucson's surrounded by these beautiful mountains and you know trying to capture some of that and I think it reflects my love of the desert. In the desert here you know it's typically like 6 to 15 percent humidity or something like that and, and uh, so I have to keep my shop humidified like around 42 percent all year long and you know then we have the monsoon storms which you know I think today it's like 55 percent humidity outside so I actually have to run the air conditioner sometimes all night long just to keep the humidity down so humidity is a challenge but it's doable if I don't keep my shop humidified enough uh, when the guitar goes somewhere where it's really humid like when my guitars went to Spain it's going to swell up and things are going to start coming loose and binding are going to start popping off and so 42 percent humidity right around there no matter where in the world it goes it, it's going to be able to handle the humidity and the, the temperature fluctuations or the humidity fluctuations version of a double top guitar that's an all wood double top. I've been using the Nomex Core double top for about the last eight years on almost every guitar I've made and I've built two of these all wood double tops with the little western red cedar braces inside replacing the Nomex Core and uh, I'm liking the results I'm getting with that so I'm going to be experimenting with that more. So what a double top guitar is, is the actual soundboard of the guitar is hollow. You can see right here, uh, it's solid wood, but what's actually going on on the inside is there is a, this is an inner soundboard and an outer soundboard, and uh, on the inside there's a cavity with a Nomex uh, honeycomb fiber. So this is inside the core of the soundboard and what that does is it makes the soundboard very flexible and very light. It's an ultra low mass soundboard and it uh, enables the guitar to have more volume and still sound very much like a traditional guitar. So. I've been lately replacing this core material with a, a matrix of small western red cedar braces and I have been getting very good results from that and will be pursuing that more. to me that uh, the American style of guitar building is to, you know, just pick all of your favorite elements from what everybody's done in the past. And that's what I do. I like the shape of a, a Ramirez guitar. I like the shape of a Hauser guitar. I don't see any reason to change my shape. You know, what I do is I see a guitar and I like a certain element about the guitar. I like the way they do the back strip or I like the way 
the back of the head has a, a face plate on it or I like the way the end of the fingerboard comes to the sound hole so when I get a guitar in for repair and if there's an element on that guitar that I like I might incorporate that into my guitar building and I think that's kind of what everybody does in the American school of guitar building desert ironwood in the rosette. I don't think you're ever going to go to Spain and see someone doing something like that. You know, there's always a traditional mosaic rosette uh, in, their, in their design. I just take all the ideas that I think are the best that someone else has come up with and I put them all into my guitars and, you know, I've, I've come up with a, come up, a couple of my own ideas that I've uh, put into my guitars and you know, uh, that's what, how I do it. With my guitars, I think they're identifiable by the way they look. Um, the, the desert ironwood stamped out as something specific to me. The sound of my guitars is usually very clean, and I also really focus on playability. You know, a lot of people comment that my guitars are some of the easiest guitars in the world that they've ever played. The double top guitar, I think a lot of people think they're more suited for more contemporary music, but in my opinion you can play anything on a double top guitar. The whole purpose of a double top is just to have a, a louder, more voluminous guitar. With my double tops, I find that they're much more forgiving to the player. They're easier to get the sounds out that you want, and they're also more forgiving in the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of the time they cut down on the squeaks and all of the noises that you don't want to come through. I find, you know, the, the just the quality of the tone is clearer. It's, you know, just has a little more sparkle to it. Um, there's a little something that they're still missing from like a traditional Spanish guitar, which is why I'm now leaning more towards the all wood double top because I've got those to where they just, the sound is really incredible. My guitars end up mostly in the hands of uh, students at a university level um, who are seeking a professional career in guitar playing, but I've had collectors buy my guitars. I love having my guitars end up in the hands of someone who who truly loves them and uses them for what they're uh, purposed for. Right now the wait time on a guitar is uh, between six months and probably right around eight months right now. With the customization of the guitars, you know, they, they get to pick the scale length of the guitar, uh, neck profile, you know, I can try and uh, duplicate whatever no ne neck profile they want. I can uh, work with some of the aesthetics on the guitar, I do special inlays, um, you know, I do the rosette um, and the tie block inlay, I usually try to match on every guitar. And then, uh, you know, with the desert ironwood, or I uh, use some various other woods, I can do a matching inlay on the bottom where the sides come together and a matching inlay on the, on the head plate. Sometimes the whole uh, head plate on the front of the guitar, or the, the guitar neck, you know, I, I do that whole thing out of desert ironwood. So, just basic color schemes they can choose. Um, but probably the biggest thing that uh, is that they can choose from is selection of woods. 
if they want a double top, if they want a solid top, if they want an armrest. There's just so many things that they can customize on, on a guitar. Most of my guitars are Western Red Cedar Soundboards uh, double tops. So with a double top, I can do a, a cedar inner with a cedar outer soundboard. I can do a spruce with a cedar inner, and I can do a cedar with a spruce inner. Doing a spruce with a spruce, it becomes a little too transparent, and I have to uh, make it a little thicker, which uh, makes the volume of the guitar go down a little. So I tend to stay away from spruce spruce, but with the cedar, with the combinations, it's, you know, the guitars usually sound more like whatever the outer wood is. So if it's a Western Red Cedar outer soundboard with a spruce inner, you get a guitar that sounds more like a cedar guitar. And, but it'll have some of the spruce qualities in the tone as well. I'm more of a cedar guy and I usually build cedar cedar double tops. Um, all of the cedar supply that I have all comes from the same tree, which was the same tree that uh, all of Robert Ruck's uh, cedar came from. The back and the sides, I typically build with uh, East Indian rosewood, and uh, I also have a nice selection of Brazilian rosewood with sites certified uh, credentials. I always use an ebony fingerboard. With the necks, I actually prefer a heavier neck. I prefer a mahogany neck, but I almost always use Spanish cedar just because of the tradition from it. When someone first contacts me about ordering a guitar, I usually email them back and forth probably 20 to 30 times, have several conversations with them on the phone. Um, if they live in town, you know, that's great. I can, you know, have them come over, bring their guitar if they have one. You know, if they like the neck profile, I can and match that. And uh, But, you know, I work very closely with my clients to try and design a guitar that, you know, fits everything that they want. It should play the way they want, sound the way they want, feel the way they want, smell the way they want, you know, the whole shebang. I really like the design of a guitar, and I take inspiration from everywhere, you know, if uh, anything that's well made, you know, that does exactly what I want it to do. That's how I want my guitars to be. Last couple of years I've been playing around with this idea in my head that, you know, I want my guitars to feel to their owners like they were born out of their own thoughts and dreams. When a customer picks up a guitar that I've built and plays it, and it does exactly what they want it to do. That's what I'm striving for every time I build a guitar.